10.2c, factor trinomials with the greatest common factor. We should always factor the GCF first. Since we've started factoring, you have had a couple of things that we've done. We've done the GCF, where we've just had that. We've factored by grouping. And then we factor by trial and error, or the reverse FOIL. Okay, now we're going to add greatest common factor back in with our trial and error. So we want to get in the habit of when we look at a trinomial, we we'll always want to look for a, a common factor before we do anything else. So an example one here, if I look at my numbers, I have an 18, 21, and 15, and I notice that that means that we have a common factor of 3. I notice that they all have a factor of x, and my lowest exponent for my x is 2, so that means my GCF is 3x squared. So we're going to take 18 divided by 3, which should give us 6. x squared, or x to the fourth divided by x squared, which gives me x squared. My minus 21 divided by 3 is 7. x cubed divided by x squared is x. Another minus 15 divided by 3 is 5. And x squared divided by x squared is 1. So now that I have that done, I need to look at my trinomial part of this to see if I can factor that again. Always go ahead and write down the greatest common factor, and then go ahead and put your two boxes. 6, well, I'm thinking that's going to be 2 times 3, and 5 is just going to be 1 times 5. So let's put in 2x and 3x. We are subtracting. our factors. So let's see, I don't know, I'm just going to put 5 here and 1 here. So let's see, we're going to get 2x minus 15x. That's going to give me 13, not what I need, so let's try it again. Let's exchange places with my 2 and 5. So we'll put, I'm not to my 2 and 5, 1. Let's make that a 1 and 5. So now we have 10x minus 3x. Well, that will give me 7. But I need a negative 7. So that means my larger number needs to be a negative. So we're going to have 10x and a positive 3x. So that means my negative needs to go in front of my 5. And my positive needs to go in front of my 1 here. And this would be my answer. It is completely factored. Let's take a look at our second one. Well, I have a 16, 28, and a 30. So I'm kind of thinking that my greatest common factor between those looks like a 2. Now I notice that they all have an x in common, so I want to pull out an x. My lowest exponent is 1, so we're going to have a 2x. That's going to leave me with 16 divided by 2 is 8. x cubed divided by x is x squared. 28 divided by 2 is 14. x squared divided by x is x. We're going to still have a y. 30 divided by 2 is 15, x divided by x is 1, and it's going to leave us with y squared. So we write down our 2x, do our two parentheses, our boxes, make sure that we get our y's as well, of our, as, well as our x's in. Again, we are subtracting. Okay. So, when I look at my 8, I'm thinking 2 times 4, and 15, 
3 times 5. So let's put those in. It's 2x and 4x and a 3 and 5. It doesn't really matter where we start at. We just have to have some place to start. We're again subtracting. So we've got 10xy and minus a 12xy. Well, that's not going to give me 14. So, let's make some changes here. We want to exchange our 3 and 5, so let's put 5 here and 3 here. So that's going to give us 6xy minus 20xy. Does that give me 14? Oh, it does. Awesome. Okay, now I want a positive 14, so that means my larger number needs to be positive, so I want a positive 20 and a negative 6. My negative 6, to get that I need to put a negative in front of my 3, so that means I would have to have a positive in front of my 5. So then my answer would be this. And we're done.